Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Ben, for, for uh, paving the way for my presentation uh, in such an eloquent way. Um, no worries. I really think that branding a product is not the same as branding a place, and I'll come back to that. So uh, I can very well um, accept many of, of Bernd's uh, uh, claims. Uh, it's a true pleasure to be here today. Uh, I represent Tendensor, Tendensor International, which is the international branch of this Swedish uh, based consultancy Tendensor, and we have offices here in the Öresund region, in Stockholm and in Helsinki, so we are kind of Nordic. And we specialize in the branding of places, cities, regions, countries, and uh, we have specifically worked much on the public diplomacy and place branding of uh, supranational regions, such as, uh, as the, the Nordic region. Uh, we very often build Nordic projects in our work. Uh, so the topic of today is one that I really have a soft spot for. It's an important one, uh, and there's lots of potential for, for Nordic collaboration in this field. Uh, my outline for this presentation, first of all, the Nordic brand of today. What does it stand for? Secondly, challenges and future opportunities for joint Nordic uh, public diplomacy or, or branding. Thirdly, I'll address the question, is uh, branding and public, uh, sorry, cultural diplomacy uh, complementary? Perhaps they are even the same thing. Uh, I'll come back to that. And one of the main points that I will try to make is that uh, we sometimes say that the Nordic countries are punching above their weight when we talk about cultural diplomacy and branding. Uh, I would like to claim that we are perhaps punching below our weight. Uh, we are perhaps not as good as we could. Uh, become if we talk about uh, brand images. And I'll try to illustrate that. Uh, this is a map from the Mapping Stereotypes project. It's run by a Bulgarian guy who lives in London. He's mapping stereotypes that we have of each other in Europe and in the world. And this is how the Germans see Europe. We'll see if Bant and, and other German colleagues agree on this. Uh, zooming in on the Nordics, we see that Finland is all about mobile phones, Sweden is all about Ikea. In Norway, it rain, rains way too much. Uh, Denmark is about Vikings, and Iceland about geysers. This should, of course, be taken with a pinch of salt. But the fact of the matter is that the perceptions we, ha we hold of different places are many times influenced by stereotypes, uh, outdated ideas, uh, simplified images. Uh, but of course, Finland of today is perhaps more about computer games than mobile phones. Um, it doesn't rain all the time in Norway. Um, so kidding aside, the Nordics are becoming a lot cooler uh, than, uh, than this, this image. And this brings us to the Nordic brand. Let's begin by taking a look at some real uh, figures uh, of, of the Nordic countries. Last year, The Economist had a special feature on uh, the Nordic region. Um, and where it gave much praise to our societal model, to our creativity, to our culture. Um, do you, by the way, know what the Nordic supermodel looks like? It looks like this, talking about Vikings and stereotypes. But in general, The Economist had much uh, positive to say about the region. We have a lot going for us. They, for example, cited this, um, this uh, Report, the World Happiness Report. We are the world happy, world's happiest region, with Denmark taking the lead and the other Nordics uh, all coming in at the top 10. And with some minor exceptions, uh, we tend to be ranked top 10 or at least top 15 in some of the following categories. When we talk about competitiveness, innovation, creativity, social mobility, equality, quality of life. So, if we are this darn good, why isn't everyone flocking to live in the Nordic region? Why isn't everyone flocking to invest here or to visit us? Uh, some are, but not as many as to comparable advanced countries such as Switzerland or Netherlands or Canada or, or Germany. And why is that, we can ask? Perhaps because our brand image is not as strong as, as it could or should be uh, if, we, if we look at reality. It might be one answer. So what does the, the Nordic brand image uh, stand for? And to many, we can talk about an emerging uh, brand conveying some of, the, of these things. The Nordic noir becoming the new black, literally, um, with, with uh, Danish TV series and, and Swedish crime writers, Norwegian crime writers. 
Uh, we have the new Nordic food movement. There's, all, all, um, there's even Nordic food diplomacy. Or let's take the Icelandic uh, experience industry or film location phenomenon, or the, the, the Finnish uh, computer game wonder. Um, we can talk about the uh, fashion brands conquering the world. And we can talk about people like this. Does anyone know who this is? This is a Swedish guy called Felix Kjellberg. He also goes by the name PewDiePie. He has his own YouTube channel where he, for a living, is commenting computer games. And he's the world's biggest YouTube star at the moment. He has 30 million subscribers to his channel. Uh, recently, he passed Rihanna, uh, music star Rihanna, as the most viewed person or channel of all time with 5.2 billion individual visits. So we are talking something different or something else than just IKEA or Vikings or mobile phones. And the economist in this special issue uh, noted many of these developments, contrasting with how things were 20 years ago when the Nordic region was, and I quote, a cultural backwater. Uh, so the question is, have these newer developments taken root uh, in the public mind, in the image of the region? And we can take a look at the Country Brands Index, which, which is one of three, three of the more widely uh, accepted measurements of, Nord of nation brands. And when it comes to overall brand image, we can see that we score fairly, way, uh, fairly high, uh, but we are not all found in the top 10. So we are slightly underperforming if we compare it to, to reality or, or performance. And looking at one of the sub-indices, uh, which is culture and heritage, we can see that we, are, we, we score a bit lower if compared to the overall uh, scores, overall brand image just presented. And going even more into detail, looking at one of the dimensions that make up heritage and culture, which is art and culture, we can see that we, we, only one of us reaches top 15. So it seems that this cultural phenomenon that we talk about has not yet uh, really trickled down to global audiences. And we are still, to some extent, seen as a cultural lightweight in the world uh, when we talk about perceptions. And this brings us to the uh, challenges that we face uh, in cultural diplomacy and, and uh, common branding, um, and the opportunities, of course, most importantly. And first of all, I'd like to underline improving or nuancing an image for a place has very little to do with advertising, very little to do with slogan, uh, uh, logos or slogans. Uh, you don't construct the reputation, you earn it by doing things, especially for a place. Uh, first challenge, we seem to be too small individually and fairly unknown in countries such as Brazil, China and India uh, to have full impact. And besides, we are lumped together anyway in many cases. We talk about Nordic noir and Nordic food, not uh, Swedish or Norwegian noir or Danish food. Um, so I think with a collaborative approach uh, and pooled resources, we can have much more impact and outreach. And if we also could come up with a common purpose, a common story of what we could do for the world, that would be, be quite a powerful mix. We need to deal with outdated uh, images or stereotypes, which can be challenging. And I think there's an opportunity for future-oriented story building, not storytelling. I'll come back to the, what that is. Uh, and sure, we can live on past achievements, but I really think that it, it could be much more interesting and compelling if we could find a future-oriented story of what we all can achieve together uh, in the world and in the future. And to be credible, we can not, not just tell this story, we need to build it with common efforts. We need to, to earn trust and earn reputation. And I'll give you an example from Finland soon of, of how that can be done. And thirdly, we have to deal with bureaucratic hurdles. It's difficult, we have seen in many of our Nordic projects, to build a long-lasting Nordic collaboration uh, in, in uh, promotion because of a lack of mandate from national government or unclear mandate. For example, Business Sweden or, or Danish Trade Council have difficulties promoting something that may result in a business or an investment coming to another country. Um, so therefore, many promotional projects become one-off things, just one project, one roadshow, one showroom with Nordic content without any bigger context or strategy. 
So there's really an opportunity to create a common strategy, common direction, um, and give a political mandate to the promotion agencies to, to uh, work so that they can promote both their own country and other countries simultaneously. So coming to the last um, topic, um, our branding and cultural diplomacy complementary or conflicting? And I think they are very much complementary. They very much go hand in hand. And I'll try to illustrate why I think that with two, two good examples. Did you know that Finland wants to be the world's problem solver by 2030? It says so in their national branding strategy. And this is by no means empty talk. They recently launched Solved. It was FinPro, the Trade and Investment Council, that launched this, and it's closely aligned with the, with the 2030 vision. Uh, it's an online clean tech advisory service that tackles the world's environmental problems uh, by connecting those who have a problem with experts in Finland and other countries who can help solve this problem. So it's perhaps not cultural diplomacy, more commercial diplomacy, but a very uh, interesting example of, of uh, building your story and, and solving relevant problems. Second example, did you know that Sweden wants to be seen as progressive, open, caring, um, innovative according to its nation branding platform. And these values permeate many of the cultural diplomacy and public diplomacy initiatives. For example, this example. Um, in this initiative, Democreativity, uh, Sweden or Swedish Institute, Visit Sweden and Business Sweden um, have launched an open invitation to the world um, to explore the, poten the potential of creativity by highlighting diversity and underrepresented ideas. And these ideas can then be used by game developers all around the world to create compu computer games from. And Annika Rembe from Swedish Institute will be joining the uh, panel tomorrow, and uh, she could perhaps uh, elaborate more on this. Um, but both Solved in Finland and Demo Creativity are interesting examples of how you build the story, apropos story building. Uh, by doing interesting things, relevant things, rather than saying things about yourself. They also illustrate how you create relationships and engagement with other, other people in the world. Uh, they're also future-oriented, focusing on, on uh, tackling global issues such as uh, sustainability or, or democracy. And the point is that the best, modern, most effective nation branding has nothing to do with advertising or, or logos or slogans, as I've said, or even marketing. It's much more about dialogue, engagement, building trust, building relationships, and collaboration to tackle joint uh, problems and joint issues in the world, which I think that the best cultural diplomacy and best public diplomacy is all about too. So they really certainly go hand in hand, these, these concepts. And finally, just to take the opportunity to mention a new Nordic initiative uh, that may help build the Nordic brand and the Nordic story. Um, it's called Nordic Talent Attraction and Retention Collaboration. It has been initiated by Copenhagen Capacity, Morten, who is here in the audience, and us at Tendensor, and it builds on a Nordic project that we ran last year on this topic. And the long-term goal is to promote the region as a destination of choice for international and global talents. Uh, it's supposed to be member-based, uh, so we're inviting cities and regions to, to join, and we have a dialogue with Nordic Council of Ministers around this. Uh, so let me know afterwards if you're interested in more information about this. So on that note, uh, I'd like to thank you very much for your attention, and I'm looking forward to the discussions in the debate. Thank you.